Hello, welcome to my Frequently Asked Questions. Today I'm answering an interesting question about jowls. How do I get rid of my jowls permanently? Do I need cosmetic surgery or are there other techniques such as using exercise, lifestyle changes? What was What is really going to help these? So in answering this question, there's a few things that we need to consider. And jowls, well, first of all, what are jowls? What is the definition of them? What causes them? What are risk factors that can accentuate them? What things can help? Can exercises, can weight loss, and ultimately what treatments may treat them if they are there? So first of all, what are jowls? Well, jowls are really uh, a change in the shape of the face. And you know, when you're young, you have this nice kind of V-shaped appearance to the jawline, and with aging, it often gets squarer. And what happens is, this area of the cheek gradually comes down and it creates this fullness along the jawline, making the jawline squarer. There's often laxity, there's loose skin, and of course there are ethnic considerations, there's difference in the skin thickness, and there's a lot of individual variation with this as well. What causes jowls? Well, the number one thing is aging. And all of us have changes with gravity, loose skin, and um, skin laxity. And those three elements over time with age accentuate jowls. The second thing is genetics. Uh, this is an image taken from uh, uh, new, the broadsheets where you know, this, this patient was actually 20 years old and she needed to have a facelift to lift the aging areas of her face because she had a rare condition called lipodystrophy which exaggerates facial aging I and mean, she's only 20 years old yet she's got this um, aging process going on now fortunately that is quite a rare medical condition but genetics definitely play a role in how jowls develop Many of the younger patients who come to see me for facelift surgery or facial treatments, well, often patients who are in their 30s or roundabouts often have hypermobility. And one thing I ask patients to do is just see if can you bend, you, how far can you bend your thumb towards your wrist? And some patients can bend it all the way back to their wrist, which suggests hypermobility. The, the way you're made, the collagen is just looser. Some patients who have early menopause, which may be just um, natural aging, or it may be like um, from medical conditions or treatment, well, that change in hormones can actually accelerate facial aging in some women. And then the other element is the kind of underlying anatomy. And I certainly find patients who've got like a more recessed chin, a chin that sits further back, often the jowls and the buccal fat area is just more prominent in those individuals. And then the final thing, which is becoming increasingly common, is non-surgical treatments. Patients who've had lots of filler put along their jawline, well, it often doesn't make you look younger. It often increases the squareness of the jaw. And more and more patients come to see me because they just feel they don't look like they used to. They don't look younger. And you know, a little bit of fillers along the jawline can look good. It can look refreshed, but too much. And it just makes the jawline squarer, which is not that kind of youthful V shape that we see and find like attractive in, in, in youth. Will losing weight get rid of jowls? Well, it's going to have a minimal effect. And the reason is, as we've talked about, most of the changes around jowls, the effects of aging, the effects of gravity, the effects of genetics, none of these things can really be restored by weight loss alone. Certainly weight loss can make a difference to the neck because it can be less superficial fat in the neck and it can reduce, reduce things like your collar size. But does it affect lifestyle? It doesn't tend to affect lifestyle. And the reason being is, it doesn't affect lifestyle because of these changes that are really related to gravity and facial aging as opposed to anything else. What about facial exercises? Can facial exercises reduce jowls? And by that, various techniques have been suggested. Yawning, humming, puckering your lips, blowing up the cheeks, chewing. Honestly, facial exercises are not going to lift this area of your face. Certainly smiling, 
Smiling means that your facial areas of the cheeks and that can improve the jowl area. However, it's going to be difficult to completely smile all the time. And so the jowls are going to drop because when you, those facial muscles are not being used, everything will come back down to where it used to be. But facial exercises, they're not truly going to improve the jowl area because they can't restore the anatomy. How can you get rid of the jowls? Well, there are various treatments that can either hide, support, tighten or lift these areas and really we can divide these into sex. Non-surgical treatments such as dermal fillers, jawline skin tightening such as radio frequency, ultrasound, thermal techniques, milder surgical techniques such as liposuction and using a chin implant to restore or rejuvenate the chin and restore like a recessed chin. That's going to be suitable for younger patients. Ultimately, it may be a neck lift or face and neck lift that is required. Often, there's a certain point where the best results are going to come from a combined treatment. That might be a vertical deep plane facelift that will restore everything exactly where it used to be. It may be reduction in the buccal fat area. It may be chin augmentation. And often, this will give the very best result. My name is Dr. Julian De Silva, an oculofacial plastic surgeon based in London, and facial treatments are things that I do every day for my patients. This cannot construe a medical consultation. It's really for education and information purposes. So the first thing was dermal fillers. Well, how can dermal fillers help? Well, dermal fillers put around the cheek area can lift some of this area. A small amount put along the jawline can hide early jowls. And hyaluronic acid fillers, they're made out of a, uh, of, um, the, uh, a substance that is manufactured. And so allergies and reactions are very rare. But they can be really used quite well to hide early signs of jowls. Secondly, radiofrequency frequency. Well, this can be used to tighten the skin. And so with early facial aging, skin tightening with radio frequency or other techniques can have a mild effect. Now, to truly get to the jowls, there are um, evolutions of this, such as face type, but I would not class those quite as non-surgical because the, the instrumentation is put beneath the skin and the recovery for a technique that goes beneath the skin, well, it's going to be the same as surgery. But it depends on how this treatment is done will determine how effective it is and also the recovery from the treatment. But generally speaking, the treatment with radio frequency and skin tightening is going to be relatively mild. Third, well, reshaping of fat in this area and, and um, augmenting the chin where the chin is recessed, this can be helpful in younger people and can... Uh, can be really very helpful in re, um, restoring a jawline and angle to the neck. Some people just genetically don't have this angle. And so partly removing the soft tissue, the fat, partly un tightening the underlying muscle, and then finally tightening the skin, which may be with radio frequency, that can really improve this area considerably. Facelift surgery. Well, facelift surgery is after your kind of 30s, 40s onwards, lifting will tend to restore the anatomy to where it used to be. Now, conventional facelift surgery lifts towards the air and lifts the, the smas in that direction, which does make a difference, but it doesn't always restore the V-shaped appearance of the jawline. Deep plane facelifting, well, this restores things vertically, lifting upwards towards like your cheek area, and that will restore the anatomy to where it used to be, and that gives a very, very um, natural rejuvenation of the jawline. It does take a number of hours to complete, and and really, it should. It's really required after a certain degree of facial aging. I've also um, been using regenerative medicine, and that's a combination of fat transfer, platelet-rich plasma, amniotic membrane products. These hold the key to restoring and rejuvenating the face in a more natural way because it's using your own body to heal you faster and potentially undo facial aging because there are many of these constitutes are variants of growth factors and stem cells that tend to improve 
youthful appearance and soft tissues. What if I already have jowls? Well, we talked about various lifestyle th factors. We talked about non-surgical treatments and ultimately surgical treatments are going to be necessary for some people. What are the key factors? Well, genetics, there's not a great deal you can do about your genetics. It's what you've inherited from your parents, but they, looking at your parents will give you an idea of how you are likely to age. Lifestyle measures, losing weight, exercises, well, Unfortunately, those things have really limited effect in this particular area. One tip I would suggest is do avoid having lots of non-surgical treatments and fillers added along your jawline because although it might look smoother, you just won't look younger. Now, light surgery, by that I mean tightening the skin, augmenting the chin if your chin is recessed, reducing like superficial fat, such as liposuction, this can really be helpful in, in some patients. And then ultimately, if you have a certain degree of facial aging, well, it's really facelift surgery and vertical facelift surgery or a deep plane facelift that's going to make the maximum difference. And combining that with reshaping some of the buccal fat and addressing the chin, that can really give a really nice and youthful appearance. So, I hope this information has been useful for you. And if you have any further questions or anything you'd like to ask me, do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you for watching.